Tell us who you are and, and what you work on. Uh, my name is Zane Bitter. I work at Red Hat on uh, mostly on HIT. Um, one of I'm one of the original HIT developers. Um, been working on projects since 2012, I guess, when we started. Uh, so HIT is the the orchestration service for OpenStack. So it's uh, about managing how you create uh, and maintain your kind of resources that you're using in the OpenStack cloud over time. Um, so it, it manages the dependencies between various uh, things that you have to spin up, like servers, volumes, um, networks, ports, all those kind of things, and it allows you to uh, define in a declarative way um, what you what resources you want, and it, it, it does the job of figuring out how to create them in the right order and and, and do it uh, reasonably efficiently, you know, um, not waiting too long between, between creating stuff, but also making sure you have all the dependencies uh, in the right order. So, and, and then it can manage those deployments over time as well. So, uh, if you want to change your thing, it can figure out what it needs to do to change. Um, you know, if you need to replace the resource, what it needs to do to replace the resource and get everything else pointed to the right things again. What is new in Okata? What have you been working on in this cycle? So what I've been working on in Okata is um, having a way of, of auto-healing um, servers. So if your server dies for some reason, um, you'd like that to recover by itself rather than having to page someone and say, hey, you know, my service is down, like, and go in there and manually fix things up. Um, so I've been working on uh, integration between a bunch of different services, um, some of which started during uh, the previous cycle. <laughs> um, so I was working with um, Fei Long Wang from Catalyst IT, um, who's the PTO, PTO of the car. Um, getting some integration working between Zakar and Mistral so that uh, you can now uh, trigger a Mistral workflow from a message on the Zakar queue. Um, and so it, if you just set that up as a subscription in, in Zakar, then it can fire off the thing when it gets a message on that queue saying, hey Mistral, run this workflow. Um, and then that in turn is integrated with AID because uh, that's AODH as a lot of people call it. <laughs> I'm told the correct pronunciation is AID, uh, which is the alarming service for for OpenStack. Um, so it can. For some reason, I thought it was an acronym. <laughs> no, it's an it's an Irish name. So yeah, okay. that's, that's, oh, that's good to know. Uh, Owen Glenn is responsible for that one. I think. Um, <laughs> But it's, um, uh, you can set up the alarm um, action for an alarm and aid to be post messages to uh, So when you kind of combine those together, that means when an alarm goes off, post a message to a queue, that can trigger a workflow. Um, and what I've been working on in uh, in Okada is getting that all packaged up into a heat template so we have all the resources uh, to create the alarm and aid, um, hook it up with a subscription, um, or hook up the Zakaku to a Mistral subscription, um, and, and have that all configured in the template along with uh, the workflow action, which is uh, to go into the to call heat and say, hey, this this server is unhealthy now. We don't. Uh, we know from external to heat, we know that this server is bad, uh, and then kick off a stack update which says, oh, this server is uh, been marked unhealthy. We're going to uh, create a replacement, and then as part of the stack update, we'll we'll remove the old one. Is that done, or you still have stuff to do in? Python? It's done. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's all. So working, there's a, if you look at the heat templates repository, um, OpenStack heat templates, there's an example in there. Um, so you can try that out. There is there is a couple of caveats. There's one, um, I guess, missing feature in AID, which is that it 
there is a delay between when you create the alarm and when uh, it there is a short period where if a, if an event comes in, it may not um, trigger an alarm. Um, so that that's kind of one caveat, but um, other than that, once it's up and working, it, it, it works pretty reliably. So um, it's cool. But um, so the the other thing I should mention is you have to turn on uh, event alarms in A, uh, which is basically triggering alarms off of events in the uh, on the Oslo messaging notification bus, um, which is not on by default, but it's a one line configuration change. What can we look forward to in Pike? Or is it too early in the week to say yet? <laughs> um, we have a few ideas for Pike. Um, one of the, in a similar vein, um, I'm planning to work on a template where, um, so the car has pre signed. URLs, so you can um, drop a pre-signed URL into an instance and allow that instance, but not server in other words, um, to to post to that Zakar cube without having any Keystone credentials or anything like that in there. And and basically all it can do with that signed URL is post to that one queue. Uh, so pretty similar to signed URLs in Swift, if you're familiar with that. Um, but what that should should enable us to do is um, create a template where we're we're putting a signed URL uh, with an expiry um, in, into a server, and then we can we can uh, before that expires we can recreate it, and so we can have some kind of updating credentials, but hook that up to a, a Mistral um, subscription and. That allows the, the server to kick off a particular Mistral workflow uh, to do something that an application needs to do uh, without having credentials for anything else in OpenStack. So it's so all using um, both Mistral and Heat use like Keystone Trust um, to say, hey, I will, I will operate on behalf of the user who created this workflow. Um, so if we, can, if we can allow them to trigger that through the car, then there's a, a, a pretty secure way of, of of giving applications access to to modify stuff in the OpenStack cloud, but but locking it down to only the stuff that you want to modify and not uh, not risking that if someone breaks into your VM, then they can they got your Keystone credentials and they can do whatever they want with your with your account. And so that that's one of the things I'm hoping to work on. Um, as well, we're we're continuing with um, with heat development. we we've switched over to the new convergent architecture um, in Newton. I think was the first release to have that on by default, um, and so we're we're looking at improving performance of that now. Um, so we've got the the right architecture for for scaling out to a lot of heat engines, um, but right now it's it's a little bit heavy on the database, a little bit heavy on memory. Um, which is kind of the trade-off you you make when you go from a, a, a monolithic architecture, which can be quite efficient but doesn't scale out well, to you, you scale out, but then you're you're potentially with performance problems. So um, I think there's some low-hanging fruit there. We should be able to um, to uh, crank up performance, uh, especially in terms of memory use and that kind of thing, and and database. Um, Accesses, um, so look for better performance out of out of convergent architecture and heat uh, coming up in pipe, hopefully.